Welcome to The Real Board Loft. I'm Trip Foreman, and this is the Lost Round Nose Fish Retro. This is a new fish design from Lost Surfboards, and i uh, give you a little peek at it as we're talking about it. It's set up as a dedicated quad. There's no thruster box in uh, this board. And also compared to the standard Lost Round Nose Fish or the Lost Round Nose Fish Redux, uh, this board has a little bit more thickness throughout and uh, it's got a little bit more of that retro vibe. That's the name, right? The Lost Round Nose Fish Retro. So let's talk a little bit about this board. And I think uh, the two main questions right on the tip of everybody's tongue is how is it different from the Lost Round Nose Fish? And also, how does it compare with your standard retro fish, like your Steve Liss style twin fin, uh, twin pin standard fish you know that everybody's used to so we're going to dig into it and uh, talk a little bit about about both of those questions so the lost round nose fish retro we've been surfing this board a bunch this winter uh, and and in a bunch of different breaks here in cape hatteras also took it down on a trip to puerto rico to dig into it you know what kind of waves it's going to ride big small hollow not hollow that sort of thing and get get a good wrap around the board so what we will tell you is compared to the lost round nose fish redux this board paddles i think significantly better like the lost round nose fish i don't think it's known as a really good paddler uh, but it is a ripping board in in short board conditions if you got a good paddle game this board paddles incredibly well night and day difference as far as the paddle ability of this board and the speed that it paddles through the water and then obviously most importantly like while we're all out there the wave catching ability this board, of all the boards that Lost makes, it's one of the easiest boards per size to catch waves on. Uh, you know, beyond that, compared to a standard Lost Round Nose Fish, it's going to be a little bit thicker and a little bit more volume, so you can ride it smaller. Uh, and then also, you have a wider range in which the board works. Uh, when we reviewed the Lost Round Nose Fish Redux, and then also previously the Lost Round Nose Fish, the sweet spot of the sizing on that board is, is right around where you would size your performance shortboard. And if you start adding foam onto the board, either to use it as a groveler or to make it easier to paddle, it actually backfires against you. Like that board works really, really well, like right around like where your high performance volume is. Where this board, you could ride it anywhere from your high performance shortboard volume all the way up to your grovel volume and it works the whole way through that range. It's not saying that it's a better board than the round nose fish. It's just saying that it has a wider sweet spot in which you can use it for different purposes. Um, this board here is sized uh, right at my gravel volume. It's a stock. This is a stock 6.1. So it's 6.1, 22.13, 2.7, and it's got 42.6 liters. So that's like right around like what I ride my puddle jumpers, like my puddle jumper squash or my puddle fish is normally 42 and change and when i rode my standard round nose fish this big it it didn't really work like where i found the standard round nose fish or redux to work really well was right around the high performance volume this board works really well from the high performance volume like i said all the way straight up through the gravel volume let's take a look at how this board differs from a classic steve list style fish so a steve list style fish is your standard like wide nose, parallel railed, and a big wide swallowtail with a big cut. And so when you look at the tail on this board, actually if I think if you look at it this way is the best way to look at it because you can see the rail line really comes in in the tail. And so compared to a, a, a classic Steve List style fish, let's say like a, a Christensen twin fin fish, this tail is more pulled in in the back and there's also a noticeable bump here in the outline you can see it right here it comes in and then there's also reverse there's also like a side cut like a snowboard side cut here and here so from here all the way up to here it actually inverts in the curve and then from here it bumps in and so what this bump right here in the outline and then the reverse curve here it makes the board a lot looser than a standard like a standard twin fin fish. The standard twin fin fish, they're known for going really good linear speed down the line, but they're not known for going vertical up the wave. So you can go like up and down like this and pump really good speed. And then you could do these 
big like super fast roundhouses back into the pocket, but it's they're more like long distance roundhouses rather than super tight in the pocket. What we found on this board is that you have the paddle power of a fish and you have the glide of a fish, but when you put this thing on rail, the combination of the side cut and the bump right here, it as soon as you put it on rail, you have the ability to hook it up into the up into the pocket of the wave and go vertical like you cannot on a on a standard fish. We said like a, a few minutes ago, we said loose. It's not loose like a high performance shortboard. Like when you're, it's not like squirrely or anything like that. But when, when you want to go vertical, you lay this thing on a rail and the combination of the side cut and the bump right here will send the thing straight vertical on a wave. And that's something that you can't do on a standard twin fin fish. And that, I think that really separates this board from that style of board. Uh, I would say, that that style of board does have a little bit more linear drive, like just pushing and going down the line like far, that style of board will go further on that type of pump, where this board still will go way further than a standard short board, but it really excels when you want to combine the ease of use and the range of a fish, but still want that vertical section hit. When, when it presents itself, you could do it on this. And this, this side cut right here, this actually came from the experience that Lost had with the pelagic fish, which, uh, th which is where they first debuted that, uh, that design. Let's talk about the fin setup on this board. Uh, I've got Seaworthy controllers in here, which are made by Futures. And this board is always a quad fin setup. It, there is not even a center box in it, so you cannot ride it as a thruster. It's been designed to ride as a quad. Uh, you could ride it with these fins. You could ride it with standard quad fins. You could also ride it with a uh, like a Futures T1 and then two small quad trailers. So it'd be like twin plus two trailers. Or if you had your board set up with FCS, you could ride it with the MR twins in the front, which are more vertical, and then two smaller quad trailers in the back. So there's a few different ways you can set it up. Uh, this is a great setup for the board, and this is what I was riding it and loved it with. Uh, because what this is basically is it's like a big keel fin split in half. And if you look at it from here, if you imagine these two fins connecting together, that's also a way um, of imagining, you know, what, what they're trying to do with this quad fin. But by making it a quad, it makes it a little bit more stable than a twin fin. And it also breaks up the water flow here so you can actually push the board through turns that you cannot push it through uh, with a twin fin by having the break in the fin. It just loosens up the fins a little bit uh, through the turns. Another fin setup that you can do is you can actually take a keel fin that you would run on a, a standard twin fin board and you can put a keel fin in here with a small quad trailer and that's going to give you the most linear like drive down the line to cover the furthest distance with every bottom turn. So that covers a little bit about the fins. I mean using this board because i got it in i mean to be looking at why i ordered it this size you know i ordered it this size based off the release of the board and reading the information that lost made available about the board and because it's a retro board i ordered it big because retro boards you normally run a little bit higher volume after riding it like it definitely works as a higher volume board but it, it also opened up my eyes to like wow you could ride this thing smaller as well so definitely don't be afraid to size it small if that's what you want to do with it uh, and if you want to use it as a gravel board, if you want it to be easier to surf, you can ride at higher volume as well. And th again, that's what really differentiates this board from the standard round nose fish. Uh, on all of these boards, Loss is doing uh, like a special tint, resin tint series uh, that was designed uh, by the Son of Cobra to match like that retro theme. So you can see this board has a clear deck and then tinted rails and bottom. And just a great, all around board. I mean, I wrote it in anything from, you know, knee high surf all the way up to uh, point surf that was overhead. And it worked throughout that entire range. Uh, just super fun board, really easy to surf, really, really fast. Uh, and like I said, the surprising thing was when you look at the board and it's a lost round nose fish retro, you expect to just be going blazing down the line and doing those football field length roundhouses, but the ability to go vertical is there, um, where it normally isn't on, on this style of fish. So any questions on this board, any other additional information, or if you want to go ahead and order one, give us a call at the shop, 
987-6000 or look us up online realwatersports.com forward slash surfing. Thanks for tuning in.